Well, morning, church. Welcome to our Wednesday midweek devotion. It is that time of the week where I come to you in video form and share uh, just some inspirational scripture, prayers, and, and announcements, of course, of things going on in the church. I do want to apologize. I did not get a video out to you last week. Um, last week, I was up in North Carolina with Todd Simonis, our canon for church planting here in the Anglican Diocese of South Carolina. And we were attending a, a little mini conference that was specifically on, on church planting in rural areas. Uh, oftentimes, we've seen church planting takes place in cities and urban areas, uh, and that's great. That's a wonderful thing. Um, but it means that sometimes the smaller places, the more rural places, the more remote places take a back seat and, and sometimes are even forgotten about. Uh, great conference. We had a great time up there um, talking with other small town pastors, um, other pastors that have either planted churches or revitalizing churches or just stepping into to churches just like you know what I've done here at St. Jude's and, and really trying to help have, you know, spirit breathed life come back into these places. Um, and really St. Jude's is in a great place. We're not as far out as, as what some of these other pastors were dealing with. But as you look around the diocese, as you look at some of the places that are more rural or more remote or further from the big cities and therefore resources, um, it's, it's a concern that I have uh, personally for our diocese as a whole. Um, just to make sure that we stay connected with folks, that our, our preachers and teachers, our priests out there, um, continue to be fed spiritually. One of the resources that we picked up at, at this seminar is a little book. It's called A Big Gospel in Small Places. I know it's kind of hard to see that, but um, it says, Why Ministry in Forgotten Communities Matters. And one of the points it makes, and one of the things that was talked about, was over half the world's population over 3 billion people uh, live in rural or what they call forgotten places. Um, obviously, a lot of folks have flocked to the cities, and, and half the world's population do live in cities. But when you look at landmass, more people live in rural areas uh, by comparison than in cities. And so it's an important place. Oftentimes, you hear about Jesus going to the wilderness or being on the edges of towns um, or intentionally gathering with, with you know, folks um, that were not right in the city center. Um, of course, we do see him go to Jerusalem, um, so he's there as well. But, but that, to me, just shows an intentionality that we need to make sure we include in our ministries of, of still continuing to reach out and do ministry in those uh, smaller places. So I'm, I'm excited to read this book here in the next couple weeks. Uh, A Big Gospel in Small Places, written by Stephen Whitmer. Um, and I've already been looking at, at uh, just other resources kind of around this as well, because it got me so fired up. So I apologize there was no video last week. Um, I was in a small town, a rural place, and didn't have the ability to upload a video um, last weekend. Kind of continuing on that theme of, of wilderness and rural places, uh, we've got some men from our church gathering with some men from a few other churches in the diocese, and then um, they're going to be setting out on a men's hike. And I'm very, very excited about this opportunity that we have um, to to join together on a men's hike. You know, as, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen another. And, and I think that's important for us to be intentional about men's ministry. Now, there's all kinds of things you can do with men's ministry, and we've got some events coming up that I'll mention in a minute. But one of the most important things, I think, for, for guys is we oftentimes get so kind of career-driven or work-focused that, that stepping away, even in the evenings in our own homes, can be difficult because the cell phone is still buzzing, the emails are still coming in. Uh, and it wasn't always like this. You know, we live in a day and age now where communication is so instantaneous that it can be harder for us to remove ourselves. So one of the beauties of these hikes is that we're out in the wilderness. We, we are in a place where cell phones don't necessarily work. Now, for safety reasons, we do keep GPS and, and signaling devices, but, um, but we're not checking email. We're not responding to text messages. Um, you know, we only really get notified if there's emergencies uh, back home or, of course, on our side as well in the woods. And, and I, I say all that because when I look at Scripture, 
when I look at the example Jesus sets for us, that is an important thing for us to do, for men and women, to, to find a quiet place where we can go. But I think oftentimes it is, it is so hard um, for us to do that. So these hikes allow for that. These hikes allow for that. So I would ask that you would keep the St. Jude's men as well as the men from St. John's, from Christ and St. Paul's, Young's Island, uh, St. James. We've got somebody from St. James coming. Um, and then also somebody from St. David Chiral joining us. So five churches represented on this hike. Um, I would ask you to keep this group in your prayers as we go to the wilderness, as we go to the mountains, and we hope to hear from the Lord, that he would speak into our lives in some capacity, and that we would just, you know, enjoy each other's fellowship and, and the beauty of what God's created as well. Um, these, these are wonderful, wonderful examples uh, or opportunities to hear from, from the Lord. And I want to give some examples of that. Uh, so directly from Scripture, when Noah builds the ark, it settles on a mountain. And God makes a, a covenant, a promise there with Noah and, and speaks to him on that mountaintop. Um, he does the same thing with Abraham. Abraham goes to a mountaintop uh, it, in, to sacrifice his son, ultimately, and, and God makes a promise with him as well. We see that same covenant being made then and there. And then, of course, Moses. Moses goes up on a mountain a couple times. Once, there's a burning bush, and that is his call, his, his, his call into ministry to go and save his people. And, and then again, we see Moses on a mountain when that promise, that covenant is made through the Ten Commandments. And so those are just three examples of stories that we know, stories that are common to us that we know from the Old Testament. There are several other examples throughout. We see the, the uh, illustration of mountains being used throughout the Psalms, throughout uh, Isaiah, um, on Mount Zion, a feast will be prepared. Um, so, so throughout Scripture, we see how when we're called to the wilderness, when we're called to the mountains, God works. Well, then we see that in Jesus' life as well. As he begins his ministry, he goes into the wilderness for 40 days, and he hears from his Father. He hears from, from God the Father, and, and it prepares him, of course, to then go into the ministry. He deals with the temptations that come, uh, but he faces those, he leaves them there, and he heads back into the world, into ministry. And so I think, again, um, my prayer, my, my hope for uh, the group of guys going on this hike is that God will speak to us. One of the things, whenever we intentionally go out and seek to hear from the Lord, whether it be on a hike, whether it be through a retreat, whether it be, I mean, even just going to a conference last week, when we're going to a place where we are likely to be filled up by the Holy Spirit in some capacity, um, the devil doesn't like that. He gets kind of ticked off. And, and that, you know, whatever he can do, in some ways it's just keeping you busy leading up to it. In some ways it's the, 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 the busyness of, of what you'd be coming back to. Um, sometimes he tries to just cause a rift in the family. Um, sometimes it's, I mean, it's just any number of things. The devil will try to find a crack and get in there. And, and you know, in the last 24 hours I've been dealing with, uh, you know, a broken appliance. I've been dealing with a car battery in, in Trisha's car that's given me a little bit of trouble um, with these colder mornings. And then it's, you know, I don't want to leave and, and worry about what situation she may find herself in, what situation my family may find themselves in. And so, of course, you know, those are things that, that the devil is doing to just get in the way of the joy that we will have in this, you know, opportunity to go and, and hear from him on the mountain. So we pray against those things. We pray specifically against those things. And of course, we pray for our families. Um, one verse I want to share with you, uh, and, then, and then we'll go into a time of prayer, is uh, it's Romans 5. And it's one of my favorite passages. It's one that I kind of just discovered at the Citadel. I'd read it before, but while I was at the Citadel, it was one that made sense to me. Um, and it's one that I turn back to often. And it's... it's um, Picking up at verse 2, through him, through Jesus, we also have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our suffering, knowing that our suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts 
through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And so just in the midst of, of preparing to go on a hike, in the midst of preparing to go to a conference, in the midst of even coming back from those things, we look at, at the suffering, so to speak, um, and how that helps us to endure, and that builds our character, and in that character we find hope, hope in a risen Lord, hope in the Holy Spirit, hope in what it is that fills us up, which is God's presence uh, when we're in these places and on these uh, trips or meetings or whatever it is. So I share that with you because it's a verse that, that has spoken to me several times throughout my life and um, in the midst of, of being arm deep in uh, <laughs> dishwasher water that was having problems and, and trying to drain that and whatnot, I thought, man, this just sucks. You know, there's no other way around it. Now here I am about to head out of town here in the next couple days and, and uh, it's producing character. It's producing, you know, I'm enduring it, it's producing character, and that gives us hope, hope for what is to come. Well, I do want to pray. Before I pray, I just want to remind you all, we'll be gathering tonight, Wednesday, over in Scarden Hall um, for our uh, fellowship and teaching, going through uh, spiritual gifts. We'll be gathering Sunday for worship, 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock, uh, with breakfast in between. And um, we will be celebrating all Saints Day on October 31st. So if you've gotten the emails about that, we'll be, of course, remembering all the saints that have gone on before us. Uh, but anybody specifically in the last year that you would like us to remember, send an email over to the church so we can get their names listed uh, for the prayers. And then also another date I just want to put out there is um, November 11th. Men, November 11th, we are going to have a gathering more details to come, but really just trying to get some of our men's ministry things here at St. Jude's kicked off. So November 11th, men, wives, if you're hearing this, write this down, remind your husbands. Um, we're going to have a gathering with more details to follow, but it'll be an evening gathering, um, food, fellowship, uh, and just some idea sharing, um, a little bit of, of just, you know, kind of BSing, hopefully around an outdoor setting. Um, uh, and I look forward to that. should be a good time. More details to follow. You'll hear about it in the announcements, and, and I'll be talking about it more in these videos. But let's pray. I want to pray today. Um, this is a prayer for those we love. So for our families, but, but really for anyone that we love. So Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us, especially our families and our friends and our neighbors. We entrust them to your never-failing care and love for this life and the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.